Hello, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my organic chemistry playlist. In the last video, we started talking about isomerism or stereochemistry. We talked about the constitutional or structural isomers, the diastereomers, enantiomers, mesyl compounds, as well as the conformational isomers. In the last video, we learned that D versus L stand for dextrorotatory versus levorotatory. D versus L are experimental findings. You can only test them experimentally using polarimeter or the plain polarized light. D rotates the light clockwise versus L, which rotates the light counterclockwise. Today, we'll talk about a different configuration, which is R versus S. This is not empirically tested, but this is done by pen and paper based on the priority of the groups attached to the famous chiral carbons. In order for the carbon to become chiral, it has to be attached to two different substituents. Today is the fourth video in my organic chemistry playlist. To learn about the difference between chiral compounds and achiral compounds, please check the last video. Optical activity, this is dextro or D and this is levo or L. So D versus L are established experimentally by a polarimeter, the plane polarized light. This is optical activity. R versus S is established by the priority of the groups around the central chiral carbon, i.e. not by polarimeter, but by good old pencil and paper. Just because something is D doesn't necessarily make it R. It could be D and S or D and R. Also, if something is L or levorotatory, it could be L and R or L and S. Let's start by answering the question of the previous video. Which of the following compounds is optically active? You can choose more than one. Please pause and try to answer this yourself. Remember, the molecule is chiral if it has a chiral carbon or carbons. If it just has one chiral atom, then it's automatically chiral. But if it has more than one chiral center, then it need also have no internal plane of symmetry in order to be chiral. And if it's chiral, it's going to be optically active. So let's start by A. Do I have chiral centers? Yes, I have two. Do I have an internal plane of symmetry? Yes, I do. This is a mirror that will divide the same molecule into two equal halves. OH, OH, HH, CH3, CH3. So this has an internal plane of symmetry and therefore a chiral, meaning optically inactive. Let's try the second one. Can I draw an internal plane of symmetry here, here or here? No. Do I have chiral carbons? Yes, I have two. Is this chiral? Yes, it's chiral and optically active, so I can choose B. Let's try C. Do I have chiral centers? Yes, I do. Do I have an internal plane of symmetry? N nope. Therefore, C is chiral and optically active. How about D? Do we have chiral centers? The answer is yes. Do we have an internal plane of symmetry? No, if I try to draw this, I'll have CH3 here, but CH2, CH3 here. So no, that's not an internal plane of symmetry, which makes D chiral and therefore optically active. Let's try E. Oh, look at this. I have two chiral centers, but I do have an internal plane of symmetry, dividing it into two equal halves. This is a meso compound, and this meso compound is not optically active. It is a chiral as a whole, despite having two chiral centers. How about here? Do we have chiral centers? Yes, we have two chiral centers. Can I imagine line dividing them? Yep, they have an internal plane of symmetry, which means F is a chiral and therefore optically inactive. Let's try G. How many chiral carbons do we have? Only one chiral carbon. Oh, so it's automatically chiral, which means optically active. How about H? Oh, look at this. I have an internal plane of symmetry. And despite having two chiral carbons, the compound as a whole is achiral and means optically inactive. So the correct answers are B, C, D, and G. Remember in the last video, we talked about all kinds of isomers. We talked about stereoisomers, constitutional isomers, and then the stereoisomers were configurational or conformational. Configurational isomers include enantiomers and diastereomers. The diastereomers could be epimers or could be geometric isomers. Meso compound is a compound with more than one chiral center, but has an internal plane of symmetry, making the compound as a whole achiral and therefore optically inactive, meaning it cannot rotate the plane polarized light to the right or to the left. You see this word? It's called configuration. Configuration is the spatial arrangement of atoms or groups in a molecules. 
i.e. how they are arranged in space. And we have two types. Absolute, when I'm just talking about a singular molecule independent of other molecules, irrespective of other doofuses. But relative, it means I'm comparing one compound to another compound. I'm comparing one chiral molecule relative to another chiral molecule. Why the comparison? Because this will help me determine if we're talking about enantiomers, diastereomers, or if this is just the same compound. Next, I've promised you last video to talk about R versus S absolute configuration today. So let's do this. How can I determine whether the molecule is R or S? Do I need to use a polarimeter? No, the polarimeter is for D versus L. But here we're talking R versus S. And for R versus S, we need pencil on paper. First, you need to look at the chiral carbon and look at the atoms around it. Then order the atoms around it from highest priority, we'll call this number one in priority, to the lowest priority. So one, two, three, and the lowest of the low is four. And this ranking of priority is based on what? based on the atomic number in the good old periodic table. After you rank your atoms or groups of atoms from highest priority to lowest priority based on the atomic number, then you need to put the lowest priority, which is number four, in the back. Ignore it, ghost it completely. Then play with the remaining three. Look, if they draw a clockwise arc, this is an R molecule. If they draw a counterclockwise arc, this is an S chiral carbon. And just like stoichiometry, remember, in ideal stoichiometry, you only had four types of problems. If you master them, you'll be in good shape. Same thing here. We only have four kinds of problems that you can encounter when it comes to absolute configuration. The first types of these problems is the easiest, where the lowest priority is already in the back for you. So you just ghost it, ignore it, and then look at the remaining three. If they make a clockwise arc, this is R. If they go counterclockwise, this is S. Sometimes carbon number four is in the front. What should I do? Well, the front is opposite to the back. So you ignore it, look for the remaining three, and then reverse it. If they are going clockwise, then it's gotta be the opposite, S. If they're going counterclockwise, you go with R. So this is the opposite of this. But what if they give me long chains, not a singular atom? Then we'll have to zoom in into the molecule and look at the next atoms and then the next atoms, etc. But what if number four is neither in the front nor at the back? Well, for this, we need to use the swapping method. Do I need to memorize the entire periodic table in order to answer R versus S? The answer is no. You only need to look at the ones that we'll highlight together right now. You need to know that hydrogen is number one, which means it's the lowest priority because it has the lowest atomic number possible. Then you need to focus on carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Iodine will have the highest priority because it has the highest atomic number. So if you see iodine, iodine is always number one in priority, followed by bromine, followed by chlorine, followed by fluorine, followed by oxygen, followed by nitrogen, followed by carbon, and the lowest of the low is always hydrogen. How about the hydrogen isotope known as deuterium? Deuterium is higher priority than hydrogen, but lower priority than anything else. So which trend are we following to determine the priority? The answer, just the atomic number. And therefore iodine is always the highest priority, followed by bromine, followed by chlorine, followed by sulfur, then phosphorus, then fluorine, then oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and the lowest of the low is hydrogen. And these are the steps again. Please pause and review. Now you understand what highest priority means and what lowest priority means based on the atomic number. Let's practice. How about this molecule? Is it R configuration, S configuration, both, or neither because it's a chiral in the first place? Let's see. Do we have a chiral center? The answer is yes, we do have a chiral center. Now let's order them by priority. Which one is the highest priority? Iodine always wins and hydrogen always loses. So iodine is always number one, hydrogen is always number four. And recall that bromine follows iodine, so I'll give this two, and carbon 
is low, but not as low as hydrogen. So I give this three. And this priority is based upon what? It's based upon the atomic number. Next step, what should I do? You should ignore and totally ghost number four as if it does not exist. Then look at one, two, and three. In this order, they make an arc that goes like this. Is this clockwise or counterclockwise? This is clockwise. This is going to the right. If it's going to the right, it is R configuration. Let's try this one. Do you think this is R configuration, S configuration, both or neither? Please pause and try to answer this yourself. Okay, do I have a chiral carbon? Yes, I do. It's a carbon connected to four different substituents. Four different atoms. Okay, so I have chiral carbon, which means it's either R or S. Let's order them in priority based on the atomic number. Hydrogen is always number four, iodine is always number one, bromine is number two, and carbon is number three. Okay, then I do what? I ghost four, completely ignore it, look at one, two, three. They make a counterclockwise arch. If it's counterclockwise, it is S. Why do we call them R and S? Based on what? Based on the name, the Latin words. Right means rectus, and S means sinister. Rectus means right, sinister means left. How about this doozy? Is it R, S, or neither? Please pause. Okay, do I have a chiral carbon? Yes, it's one carbon connected to four different groups. Okay, priority-wise. Hydrogen is always a doofus, always a doofus. And chloride is going to win because this has the highest atomic number here. When you see methyl and hydrogen, hydrogen is always number four and methyl is always number three, which means the remaining group is number two. And then you ghost number four, completely ignore it. One, two, three, I am making a counterclockwise arc, which means I am S, sinister. Let's try a different one. Please pause and try to answer this yourself. Yes, I do have a chiral center. All right, I do not have a hydrogen, which means who is going to be the lowest of the low? CH3 will be the lowest of the low. I'll give this a four. Bromine will always be number one in case I do not have iodine. Then I'm between this doofus and this doofus. Which one wins? To answer this, you need to give me the extended relaxed structural formula for this. So I need CH2. Here's an H and here's an H. And here we are connected to the chiral carbon. All right. And after this, we have CH3. All right. Amazing. As for the other CH2OH, let's draw this. I'm also attached to the chiral carbon. And then I have two H's coming out. After this, I'm connecting to O, which is connected to an H. Let's look at the first carbon here and here. Okay, carbon and carbon, same priority, so I cannot look at them. Then look at the following highest priority. Okay, this one is connected to hydrogen, hydrogen, carbon, carbon wins. This one is connected to hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen wins. Now let's compare carbon from here with oxygen from here. Which one is highest priority, i.e. higher atomic number? The answer is oxygen, making this number two and this doofus number three. Ignore four as if it does not exist. Then one, two, three, I am counterclockwise, I am sinister. How about this one? Can you try this on your own? Let's talk about this. So this chiral carbon is attached to carbon this way, carbon this way, and OH here, but then I'm missing something. Who I am missing? I am missing the fourth one, which is a hidden hydrogen. Hydrogen is always number four. And oxygen here will win over carbon, so oxygen will be one. Now this carbon and this carbon, one will have to be two and one will have to be number three. But which one is which? Recall that this is just a CH3, but this is an ethyl group. Of course, ethyl wins over methyl. But if you are not convinced, open them up. Here is the chiral carbon attached to CH3. CH3 like this. And that will be this carbon right here. And this is my chiral center. And then as for the next one, it has CH2. So here is HH followed by CH3. H, H, H. And this will be my chiral carbon right here. Okay, let's see. This chiral carbon, we are not looking at. We're looking at the carbon connect to it. So this carbon versus this carbon. Carbon and carbon, they have the same priority. So we're a tie. How about H, H, and H versus H, H, and C? Of course, carbon wins over C, which means this lovely thing will be number two and this doofus will be number three. Ignore number four completely. Go one, two, three. This is going clockwise to that right, rectus, which means 
are. Is this hard, people? Come on. But how about this one? This molecule R, S or what? Let's try. Do I have hydrogen here? The answer is no. So who's the next doofus that will always be number four? Answer, the crazy methyl group. Bromine is number one because I do not have iodine. Bromine follows. And then between the oxygen and the carbon, which one has a higher atomic number? Answer, oxygen. So this is two and this is three. But here's the thing. Number four is not here in the back. Number four is actually up front. So what should I do? You follow the same steps, but then you reverse it. If you say R, you go with S. If you say S, you go with R. So let's cancel number four, even though it is up front, not in the back. And let's see the remaining ones. One, two, three. Here I'm going counterclockwise, which means S. However, number four is in front instead of the back. So S becomes an R. This is clockwise. Four in the front. Just follow the normal rules. One, two, three is counterclockwise. Oh, it's supposed to be an S. Yeah, but four is up front. So reverse it. S becomes an R. Try this one. R, S, or what? Please pause. Okie dokie. Which one is the chiral carbon? Look at this. This is attached to carbon, carbon, and then CH3, CH3. Oh, identical. This cannot be chiral. But look at this. Oh, it's C, C chain, and then we have H versus OH. This is the chiral center right here. Why is this chiral? Because the four groups attached to the carbon are different. But here I have two similar groups making this a chiral carbon, but this is chiral carbon. Next, order the four substituents by priority based on periodic number. Okay, H is always number four. O versus carbon versus carbon. O is going to win. So here's one. Now, will this be number two and this number three or this number two and this number three? Well, in order to know, we need to relax it a bit. This is a carbon and this is a carbon. It's a tie so far. Okay, how about the next one? This is a carbon and this is a carbon. So the same. However, this carbon is attached to hydrogens, but this carbon is attached to two carbons. This one is attached to carbon, carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. But this one is carbon, carbon, methyl, methyl. Oh, of course, methyl wins over hydrogen, which means this doozy has to be number two and this doozy is number three. Now, it, do we have number four in the back? No, it's the reverse. We have number four up front. So we're gonna reverse it. Remember that. One, two, three. I am going clockwise, which means R. Then you reverse it making the answer S. Try this one then. Okie dokie, here's my chiral carbon. Four is always hydrogen. And then chloride will win two oxygen because oxygen has a higher priority than the methyl group. Oxygen wins over carbon. Okie dokie, do I have number four at the back? No, number four is not at the back. Do I have number four in the front? It's not even in the front. Oops, what should I do then? We need to follow the swapping method. Think of it this way. Each singular swap between two atoms is like rotating you 180 degrees. If you were facing away from me and then you rotate 180 degrees, you'll be facing towards me. But if you rotate a second 180 degrees, you'll go back to your original position, which was looking away from me. So a singular swap gives you the opposite. However, a double swap will return you to the first place. Translation, if I swap once, R becomes S and S becomes R. But if I swap twice, the original R stays an R. The original S stays the S. Because swapping twice, each one cancels the other, is like rotating around your axis 360 degrees. You'll go back to your original position. In order not to miss any points on the exam, always swap twice so that you can return back to your original position. So let's go back to square one. Why am I swapping in the first place? Because the group with the lowest priority, number four, is neither in the back nor in the front. It is somewhere else, which means I need to bring it to the back. So let's bring this here. You do not even need to swap the atoms, just swap the numbers. It's even easier, okay? So I need this to be in the back. I need four to be in the back. All right, so four will be written here and two will take its place. Now two is here. All of this is a singular swap. Took me to the opposite direction. Okay, let's bring another swap so that they can cancel one another. Let's swap one and three together. So one will be written here and three will be written there. All right, 
Now, let's follow the rules. You ghost number four as if it does not exist. Okie dokie. And then what? Look at one, two, three. If you follow one, two, three, I'm going counterclockwise, which makes it S. And I swap twice, which means I am a still an S. There you go. So, when the lowest priority group, like hydrogen, is neither in the front nor at the back, what should I do? You swap two atoms with one another. If you swap two atoms with one another just once, then you get the mirror image in antimer, meaning R becomes an S and S becomes an R. But with another swap, you go back to the same molecule, which means the original R stays an R. The original S will stay an S. Let's try a third swap, then you go back to the mirror image. Let's try a fourth swap, you go to the same molecule. Have you noticed something? When I have an odd number of swaps, I got the mirror image, the enantiomer. But when I have an even number of swaps, I go back to the same molecule. Mnemonic time. When it's even number, it is equivalent. An odd total number of swaps will give you the mirror image, but an even number will give you an equivalent to the original. Equivalent means R stays in R and S stays in S. If you're not convinced, let's practice this. Okie dokie, here's the chiral carbon. How should I order these? Iodine is always number one, hydrogen is always number four, methyl is number three, and bromine is number two. So, goes number four, and let's go one, two, three. This is clockwise which makes this an R, rectus. Now let's swap iodine and bromine together. Here's bromine, here's iodine. You can swap the numbers or you can swap the atoms. Let's try swapping the atoms. Iodine is now here and bromine is here. This is one singular swap. And now let's see, this will become an S. Let's try that. Here is one and here's priority two, priority three and priority four. Ghost number four, go one, two, three. Look at this, with a singular swap, you go to the opposite. R becomes an S and S becomes an R. Because a singular swap is like your body rotating 180 degrees. You go to the opposite way. Your right becomes left and your left becomes right. Your R becomes S and your S becomes R. Let's swap a second time. This time we're swapping CH3 and bromine. By the way, you can swap any two atoms at random. It doesn't make any difference, just pick any two. Okay, let's swap the methyl and bromine, all right? And change place. Now let's order their priority. Iodine is always number one, hydrogen is always number four, methyl will be three, and bromine will be two. Goes number four, and let's go one, two, three. This is clockwise. I am back at the R baby because I rotated, so to speak, another 180 degrees. If you rotate around your axis 360 degrees, you go to the original place. From here, to here is a total number of two swaps, and two is an even number, which takes me to the equivalent place. R will stay an R, and S will stay an S. Okay, let's try this one. What kind of molecule is this, R or S? Okay, let's order them. Okay, hydrogen is always number four, chlorine will win, and then between the oxygen and the carbon, oxygen wins. Okie dokie, is four here at the back? The answer is no, four is here, neither in the back nor at the front, which means I need swap. Let's swap twice so that we go back to the original place. I'll swap the four with the two, and I'll swap the one with the three. You do not need to swap the letters, just swap the numbers, it's even easier, it takes less time. Okay, so this one becomes two, and this one becomes four. This one becomes one, and this one becomes three. Swapping twice brings me to the original place. So the rest is history. Ghost four, because four is at the back, and let's go one, two, three. One, two, three is counterclockwise. Counterclockwise is S. How about this one? Is this R or S? Okay, let's talk about this. Where is my chiral carbon? This is my chiral carbon. Okie dokie, these two have oxygen, but these two do not have oxygen, which means one and two will have to be here and three and four will have to be here. But which is which? Okay, here is oxygen, here is oxygen. We're equal. But then this oxygen is attached to hydrogen and this oxygen is attached to carbon. Who wins, the carbon or the hydrogen? The carbon wins, making this methoxy group, number one, and this hydroxyl group or alcohol group, number two, and then, which one is three, which one is four? Here is a carbon, here is a carbon. We are at a tie. This carbon is attached to one carbon and the rest is hydrogen. But this carbon is attached to two carbons, which means this one wins. Three is here and four is there. Okay, do I have four at the back? 
unfortunately no. Is four in the front? Unfortunately no, which means it is swapping time. Why are you swapping? I am swapping to bring four in the back. So let's bring four in the back by putting it here and we'll bring two in place of four. Let's cancel this here, make put the four here and the two, we'll put the two there. And to make an even number of swaps, let's swap the one for the three. So this becomes a three and this one becomes a one. Now we ghost number four, so ignore this and then look, look at one, look at two, look at three. I'm going counterclockwise and I swap twice, which means I'm equivalent because it's an even number. Going counterclockwise will be S. Next, how about this monstrosity right here? Please pause and try to answer this yourself. Where is my chiral carbon? It is here, okay? So here I have CH2OH, I have CH3, I have CH blah, 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 and then I have an aldehyde group. I do not have hydrogen, so who becomes the lowest of the low then? Methyl. Now let's look at this carbon. It has hydrogen and two oxygens because it's a double bond. So you have to imagine them relax. Here is a bond, here is a bond. It's as if we're attached to two oxygens. This one is attached to hydrogen, hydrogen, and one oxygen. Just one oxygen, but this is considered two oxygens. So between this and this, who wins? Of course this. But let's not jump to conclusions. Let's look at this, okay? Carbon, carbon, carbon. We are at a tie. Then after this, there is carbon, and this is oxygen, and this is oxygen. So of course, oxygen is better than carbon. And I have two oxygens there, so this is one. One oxygen here, so it's two. All carbons there, so this is three. Do I have number four at the back? Yes, brilliant. I need to do nothing more than cancel number four, and then go one, two, three. This is clockwise, rectus. Okay, next, what if they give me a Fisher projection? Remember that in the Fisher projection, we have the horizontal lines that are wedges coming out of the page at you, but the vertical lines are dashes, dashing vertically down into the page. I have two mnemonics. The van, vertical, dashed, dashes, vertically down into the lake. So those vertical lines are going into the page, okay? Which makes the wedges bulging out of the page. Just like this bow tie, look at the horizontal. The horizontal is bulging out and the vertical is going downwards. As my vertebral column goes from cervical to coccygeal, the van dashed vertically into the lake, which means the vertical chloride and methyl will dash vertically into the page, going downwards. However, who's bulging outwards? Hydrogen and bromine, just like that. They are bulging outwards, out of the paper. So what am I trying to accomplish? I need to put hydrogen on somewhere vertical. Why? Because I want this low priority group to go away from me. The goal is to put the lowest priority group, such as hydrogen, to make it project into the page, which means to put it on this vertical dashes. Let's just agree that we need to put it at this position. So, is this R or S? Okie dokie. First, I need to order them by priority. Hydrogen is always number four, bromine will be number one, chlorine will be two, and CH3 will be number three. Do I have number four on the vertical? Yes, I do. Which means just ignore it and look at the remaining numbers. Here is one, two, three. I am going counterclockwise, which makes it S. Do I need to reverse it? No, because hydrogen is already going into the page. But let's look at this, where hydrogen is on the horizontal, not on the vertical, which means hydrogen is bulging out of the page towards me, not away from me. Oh, so I need to do something about that. First, let's order them. Here is one, here is four, and this is two, this is three. Okay, number four needs to go there, which means it is swapping time. Let's swap twice to make sure we do not miss anything. Okay, so this four goes here, and this three goes there. Then the two goes there and the one goes here. Okie dokie, even number of swaps will make me equivalent, which means I just need to ghost number four and then go one, two, three. As I go one, two, three, I am going clockwise. And if I'm going clockwise, I am rectus or R. That's why I love to swap twice to make sure I do not reverse it. So today you learn about the steps needed to answer the question about absolute configuration of the chiral carbon. Is it R or is it S? 
and you learn about the four possibilities or the four types of problems that you can encounter on your exam. When I swap an odd number of swaps, I get the mirror image. But when I swap an even number, I get an equivalent molecule. And the van dashed vertically down into the lake. Now let me leave you with two questions. Here's the first one. And here is the second one. Let me know the answers to these two questions in the comments. You'll find the answer key in the next video in this organic chemistry playlist. And here is a quiz. What is a vanilla swap? You will recognize that this has nothing to do with organic chemistry. Vanilla has something to do with organic chemistry. Swaps have to do with organic chemistry as we did today. But vanilla swap has nothing to do with organic chemistry. Comment below. If you liked my organic chemistry playlist, you will enjoy my biochemistry playlist, my biology playlist, my general chemistry playlist, physiology playlist, anatomy playlist, pharmacology playlist, cardiology playlist. There are more than 1500 free videos on this channel, plus more than 300 videos for those lovely people who join my YouTube membership program and choose the highest tier. Smash like, subscribe, hit the bell, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo, Go to my website to download my courses, notes, cases, or if you'd like me to personally tutor you. I can tutor the chemistry out of you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine and chemistry make perfect sense.